Hi there everyone. In this series of videos, I'm going to take you through everything you need to do and everything you need to know to get your quad set up, tuned and flying brilliantly on Betaflight 4.3. If you're looking to get the most out of this new version of Betaflight, hit that subscribe button now so you don't miss the future videos in this series and let's get into it. I'm going to be splitting my Betaflight 4.3 tuning process across several videos into kind of manageable chunks that you can tackle one step at a time. This video is going to cover everything you need to know to get ready for Betaflight 4.3, updating your radio, disabling your ADC filter, enabling one bit, updating your ESCs and checking your control link. In future videos, I'm going to cover configuring Betaflight 4.3 on your quad, flying on the stock filters and PIDs, and then moving on to filter and PID tuning. So before you embark on any tuning, it's important to check over the mechanicals of your build. And this is a great opportunity for me to introduce you to the two quads I'm gonna be taking through this whole tuning process. The first is a budget quad. This is the Eosheen Wizard X220 V2, and it's one of the cheapest five inch bind and fly quads you can buy right now. The second quad is my own design, the AOS-5, a frame designed from the ground up for the best possible flight performance and running Zing 2 motors and an F7 flight controller. This is what I would consider a good benchmark for a really high spec build that you would expect to be able to get really great flight performance out of. So between these two, between the Wizard and the AOS-5, should cover most five inch quads out there. But this tuning guide is not just for five inch quads. It'll work for quads as small as this little guy. This has got a 1.8 inch prop. Or larger quads like this massive beast, the AOS 7. So everything you're gonna hear in this whole video series is gonna be applicable to just about any size quad that you want to fly. So let's check over the mechanicals. The first thing to do is to check the frame all over for any signs of damage. Any cracks in the carbon fiber, any deep scratches, any delaminations in the carbon. All of those could indicate a potential mechanical problem that might affect your ability to tune the quad. And you might want to just replace any damaged parts or, or perform any repairs that you need to now. The next thing to do is to check over all your frame and motor screws and check that they're all nice and tight. You don't want to over tighten them, but you also don't want them loose and backing out. I would say that when I tighten screws, I tend to just use three fingers on the screwdriver and give it a little twist. And that's about right for me. It's not over tight, it's not under tight. The next thing you're going to want to check is your VTX antenna. Now, traditionally, VTX antennas have been mounted something like this on a TPU piece with an SMA connector and a long VTX antenna coming out of the back. This causes a lot of problems with vibration because you have this weight up at this end and it's on a long flexible mounting and you can see that I can wobble that antenna around very easily by hand. And if you can wobble it around by hand, it's going to wobble around in flight and create vibration. So what I'd recommend instead is mounting the antenna something like this, where you cable tie it to the top plate and it's very stiffly mounted. You can see that doesn't want to flex at all. And I'm using two cable ties, one on the SMA connector and one on the actual shaft of the antenna. And I could even perhaps put a third one around this end of the SMA as well just to keep that antenna really rigidly mounted. Alternatively, if you use one of these flexible antennas, you can tape it or cable tie it to the arm of the quad, and that will also prevent it moving around in flight and prevent it creating any vibration. I haven't found too many issues with range mounting the antenna like this, but then this quad is running the DJI FPV system, which tends to have less issues with range. But still, the principle is the same. You're trying to prevent that antenna moving around in flight and creating vibration. The next thing to check is that your stack is securely mounted and that you have nuts on the top of your stack 
and everything is held nicely together. If you just move the flight controller a little bit, you should be able to feel that it's not loose and not wobbling. And the same goes for the GoPro mount. The GoPro mount is another area which can generate a lot of vibration and that can cause a lot of problems with tuning. So you want to check that your GoPro mount is securely mounted. See there, mine isn't. I can move that GoPro mount quite easily. So I'm going to just tighten up that cable tie a little bit. Yeah, that's much better. That's not wobbling now at all. So yeah, make sure your GoPro mount is really securely fastened. The final thing to think about is battery mounting. Now, I would always suggest you use two battery straps spaced out, just like we have here on this wizard. And when you put the battery in and you connect the battery up, you want to make sure that you've not got anything hanging loose like this balance lead or this XT60 because that's going to create vibration as well. This battery mounting method is much better because we've got the balance lead tucked away here where it can't move and you can also see that the XT60 connection isn't going to move either. Really, for the best flight performance when you're tuning a quad, particularly on Betaflight 4.3, you're going to just want to make sure that nothing on the quad is able to vibrate, rattle around or move when you try and move it by hand. Everything should feel nice and firmly mounted and secure. Now, one thing that's catching a lot of pilots out with Betaflight 4.3 is that it expects and it's designed to work with a very consistent packet rate between your radio and the receiver on the quad. Now if you're running Tracer, Crossfire, Ghost or Express LRS, you're going to be fine. But if you're still running FreeSky or FreeSky R9, now might be the time to consider upgrading. And I would recommend upgrading to Express LRS. That's what I use with all my quads. Express LRS is an open source project which means that the hardware is typically cheaper than proprietary solutions. And if anything, it's higher performance than Ghost, Crossfire or Tracer. I'll put some links down in the video description to the Express LRS hardware that I use in case you want to pick some up. Betaflight 4.3 is designed to work with bidirectional D-Shot. And this tuning guide is going to assume that you have bidirectional D-Shot enabled. If you have a BL Heli 32 or an AM32 ESC, you don't need to do anything. Bidirectional D-Shot is going to work for you out of the box. However, if you have a BL Heli S ESC, like the ESCs on this Eosheen Wizard, then you're going to need to update the firmware on your ESCs to get bidirectional D-Shot working. Now, whenever you update ESCs, there is a small risk that all the motors will go full throttle for no reason. So make sure you take the props off your quad before you do this next bit. To do this, go to escconfigurator.com, click the open port selection tab and select the Betaflight STM32 selection there and click connect and then connect in the top right. You should see this screen. At this point, you're gonna to want to plug in your ESC. So plug a battery into your quad. You should hear the startup beeps. And then you should now be able to read the setup from the ESCs. Now to update the firmware to BlueJ, which is what we're going to be using for this tuning guide, go into Flash All. Under Firmware, select BlueJ. Leave the ESC selection alone, that should be correct. And select the 0.14 version. And I would recommend a PWM frequency of 48 kilohertz for most quads. If you're flying a very, very small micro and you know you like 96K PWM frequency, you can flash that. But uh, I think 48 is gonna be right for the vast majority of people. And then just click flash. Once the flash is completed, you should be good to go. So you can disconnect 
from the ESC configurator and unplug your battery from the quad. If you're using an OpenTX radio, the Betaflight devs recommend moving to the latest version of Edge TX for Betaflight 4.3. Now, the easiest way to do this, I think, is to use the Edge TX Flasher utility. This can be found here, and I'll leave a link to it down in the video description as well. Download the version that's correct for your operating system. I'm on Windows. And after you've installed and opened it, you should see a screen like this. We're going to start with the SD card. Remove the SD card from your radio and plug it into your computer. In my opinion, the best thing to do is to remove the SD card from your radio when you are updating it for Edge TX. So on the X9D, you can just open the back panel where the battery is, and the SD card slot is right there. Alternatively, you can plug your radio in in SD card mass storage mode. Select your radio target. For me, this is the FreeSky X9D Plus and the correct language. You don't need to install multiple voice packs unless you need to. I'm just going to install English. And then select the drive letter for your SD card. In my case, the drive is D. And you can tell that by looking uh, in Windows and seeing that you've got EEPROM firmware images and all these other folders. Tick erase disk before flashing and write to SD card. Once that's finished, it's time to flash the firmware. To do this, go into the flash firmware option, select the releases branch and whatever the latest release is. In this case, it's the nightly. Select your radio. In this case, I'm going to choose again the X9D Plus. And then plug your radio in over USB and then just click flash radio firmware. If you have any errors at this stage, you may need to run the impulse RC driver fixer to make sure that your device is correctly detected by Windows. If that's the case, I'll put a link to the impulse RC driver fixer down in the video description and you can just run that and that should sort out any driver issues and then you just repeat the process and it should work. Once you've updated to Edge TX, there's a couple of hardware settings you'll want to change in your radio for Betaflight 4.3. So you're going to want to go into the hardware settings page. So if you hold down menu and then click page until you get to hardware page. And then there are two hardware settings you'll want to change. The first is the ADC filter. You're going to want to make sure that box is unticked. The ADC filter smooths your stick inputs, which can be handy if you're flying fixed wing, but adds a lot of delay to your sticks. And it's really noticeable when you're flying a mini quad that the, the response is sort of delayed and slow. So for a mini quad, you definitely want to turn that off. The other thing you want to do is change the sample mode from normal to one bit particularly on an X9D, because that's going to allow you to run at the higher board rate that you need for the faster control links without needing to do any hardware modifications to your radio. So I would set that to one bit for Edge TX. To get out of this menu, you just hold down exit. It should take you back to the, uh, the model screen. So now you're ready for Betaflight 4.3. If you're raring to get started, but you'd like a little bit of guidance and support with getting Betaflight 4.3 set up, tuned, and flying brilliantly on any quad, then make sure you get subscribed because that's gonna be the topic of some future videos in this series. In the meantime, if you like the work I do and would like to support me, I have a Patreon and I'll put a link to that down in the video description. I'd appreciate it if you'd check that out. You'll get access to my Discord server where you can ask questions about Betaflight 4.3 or anything else that you fancy. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.